do ba 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 do do ba do 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 a do ba do ba do 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 ba do. I've never seen Howl's Moving Castle, but I got a custom order for a purse based off of one of the main characters. So let's get started. Hi, internet friends, I'm UB, and I've always enjoyed doing costuming projects. I learned as a wee human to sew from my Auntie Lou and my amazing mom. I took to sewing clothes and accessories more so than sewing quilts, which is more what those two are into. This brings me to a couple of months ago when my dear friend and Patreon supporter Twyla sent me a message asking if I do custom orders. Short on cash, I told her, I'll do my best, but it has to start with fabric that's already in my stash. She's doing a Howl's Moving Castle cosplay for a con in March. As a big fan of my bat packs, she wanted me to make a fire demon in basically the same shape and size as the bat packs. This purse would essentially be her little companion throughout the con, and a great way to round out her costume. I thought this was just such a wonderful idea, so we chatted about the fabrics I already had and the shape and size that she wanted and what accoutrement we could kind of add to the design to make it pop a little bit more. The character's name is Calcifer and he's a little fire demon. I had to do two different versions of the design in order to find just the right way to make this little guy adorable. So stick around to the end to see what my trial and error process kind of ended up being. Like I said, Twyla wanted something similar to size and shape of my bats, which made it really easy because I was able to start with just my normal bat pack pattern. Try saying that five times fast. <laughs> I had to look up a picture of this little calcifer and it's a really adorable little character. I was looking for what details I could kind of add to his body to make him pop. We landed on giving him a yellow inner portion because that's kind of what his design is in the movie anyway. Some orange tool on the sides to give him a little bit of a fiery glow in a way. And the same eyes that I use on my bats and then put in a gold slash tan kind of drawstring to pull everything together. Pun intended. I made the Calcifer Purse 1.0 about three quarters of an inch wider on each side than my bats are. And I kept this change on my second iteration of Calcifer as well. Just making him a little bit wider so he had a little bit more of a round effect than the bats do. Twyla picked a red velvet for the fire demon's body and I chose some yellow fleece that I knew would be easy to applique onto just about anything for his inner portion. I cut my pieces out, drew the yellow flamey bits I wanted onto his body, and sewed him together pretty easily. I even had some orange and red cotton scraps that I was able to use for his lining and for his little mouth. What I didn't realize is that the velvet in my stash was stretch velvet. <laughs> I, uh... 
I, I, I don't know what that means. Anyone who's sewn on stretch velvet knows that it's likely to pull in every which way, every direction, creating wrinkles and puckers just everywhere. When I finished the entire bag and placed his eyes, I knew that this wasn't going to be the final reveal, but I wanted to see what Twyla's thoughts were so that I could incorporate them into the next version. All right, so it is day two and I finally got the fabric in to try another version of this little guy. Fresh eyes, haven't seen this guy in a number of weeks and he's he's pretty scary, so. But again, not my fault, maybe a little bit, whatever. Try number one, a little bit of a bust, but that's why you're watching. So we're going to take a look at the fabrics that I ordered upon the client's request. She thought we should try a velvet, uh, just all velvet kind of scenario. So that's what I bought. And we're gonna take a look at what these shades actually look like. All right, so thankfully this project cropped up right after the fall season, which meant that I got a lot of these oranges and reds kind of on sale. And that makes for a very nice scenario for both me and the client. So first of all, we've got this pumpkin shade, which I think is actually gonna be really fun with this. Um, I think it'll add another layer of depth to the, the flame, if you will. I also bought this because it was hard to tell what the color actually was going to look like online. I think this will be a good scenario for the yellow here. It's a little bit darker than I intended, a little bit more of a tan, but I think it's gonna do the job just fine when we get everything put together, especially when put up against this guy. And lastly, I'm not sure what I was sent here because I thought I was buying a another velvet, but this is actually a much hardier sort of material. This is almost like a faux cow skin, like a, a fuzzy leather sort of scenario. So I'm not entirely sure what to do with this. It's a very nice orange. I'll also say that this material actually makes a lot of sense for a purse. So maybe I ordered this on purpose. I'm not sure. It's a little more heavy, more durable. Maybe that's what I had on my mind when I ordered it, or maybe they sent me something I wasn't expecting. But either way, we're going to make the most out of it. It's all clearance fabric anyway. With that being said, let's start sewing. On try number two of this project, we decided to do a few new things. Firstly, Twyla felt the contrast between the red and the yellow was too much and requested I find some orange velvets that match the texture of the red velvet. I was able to order those materials and wait for them to come in. Thankfully, Twyla understands my tendency to really take my time on commissioned projects, so we had plenty of time to wait for new material to arrive. Secondly, we decided to scrap the orange tool. It was a cute idea, and I think with a little more fidgeting, I could find a way for it to really shine through and be great, but it wasn't really worth the effort, so we scrapped that idea. Number three was something that I wanted to do on try two of Calcifer, and that is installing the safety eyes before I did the finishing stitches on the bag, because on Calcifer, try one, the post behind his eyes were poking out into the inside of the bag, but if I just planned ahead a little bit better, I could install the eyes so that that post is in between the body and the lining of the bag and you don't have to come in direct contact with that eyeball. And lastly, I just endeavored to work a little bit slower with that stretch velvet, knowing that it is a big undertaking. With that being said, I changed the shape of the design in Calcifer Try 2 so that it had a separate bottom portion. That way he could also sit up on his own and maintain a rounder shape than try number one. 
I had to cut out new pattern pieces from scrap pieces of paper that I have, and I even made a cutout for the fiery applique portions that I wanted to make for him because if there was going to be a try number three, I wanted to have the dimensions of this try to go back to. After making the pattern, I cut out all of the pieces I needed and made the bottom of the bag out of the upholstery velvet that I had received. That's right, that's what you heard. Upholstery velvet is what they had sent me and what I had accidentally ordered, which is probably something I thought to do and was smart about and totally forgot about. Good story. Because it's an upholstery velvet, I consider myself super lucky that I found it like at the last bastion of clearance and got it more than 50% off because that is some expensive material right there. But I got it for a steal. This velvet was made for furniture, not for costuming, but that made it strong and hardy enough to be the perfect bottom to this purse. With the pieces cut out, it was time to carefully applique my orange and yellow velvets onto the red velvet. I chose to focus my efforts on the front this time, unlike how I put color on the front and the back of try one. A word to the wise, don't try to applique stretch velvet onto stretch velvet. It's not gonna end well for you. It barely ended well for me. This was an incredible uphill battle, but with a lot of pins, a decorative stitch, and a lot of patience, I got the orange and the yellow flames to sit nicely on top of the front of the bag. I also appliqued a bit of orange cotton on the fire demon's cute little mouth. Kind of what we talked about before, my scrap pieces. I gave him the same mouth that I did in try one. The rest of the steps for those following along at home are as follows. Remember, right sides together. Always right sides together unless I say otherwise. Sew the body together along each side, leaving the top and the bottom seams open, and leaving about two inches of space at the top of the bag open on either side for the drawstring to pass through later. If this step or any of the upcoming steps confuse you, please look at my making a DIY backpack video because I explain things a little bit more in depth in that, and it's the same basic principles. Repeat what you just did with your lining. Sew the bottom to the body. Using a lot of pins, walk the fabric around the bottom of the circle. It was at this point that I realized the circle I had cut for the bottom was entirely too big. So I had to rely on trial and error 
with my pins. I had to find where the two sets of fabric didn't stretch or fold one another, which was quite an exercise. And then I had to trim off from there. Repeat this step with the lining. Turn the body inside out to reveal what the purse would eventually look like on the outside. Insert this into your lining, which should still be inside out so the seams should be facing outwards, and pin the top edge of the lining to the top edge of the body. Then sew a straight line down both sides of that top edge. Turn this concoction inside out through the drawstring holes that you left open for yourself at the top of the bag. Stuff that lining inside the body. Install the safety eyes, but with a large white backing. I used a white felt that I had in my stash, and the white just makes the whites of his eyes a little bit bigger. The drawings I saw of him online had large, kind of squiggly eyes or very round eyes with tiny pupils. I tried to kind of keep with that look, and towards the end I might add a little black line around his eyes just to mimic that hand-drawn sort of feel, but that remains to be seen. This this step is where I pinched the safety back inside the guts of the bag so that the post behind each eye wouldn't puncture through the purse's lining, just the body. Do your finishing stitching, one line close to the edge of each side of the top of the purse, and one continuous line around the base of the drawstring openings to create a drawstring channel. For this bag in particular, I braided three cotton drawstrings together, and that just made this one a little bit thicker, a little bit more umptuous. To install the drawstring, I use a paper clip to guide the string through the channel, looping itself around and back before tying off and trimming both ends. This is a step that you can either look up on YouTube or watch my DIY bat tutorial to really figure out the steps of how to install a drawstring properly. And voila! Calcifer is complete. My only regret is that the gold stretch velvet bunched up under his eyes a little bit. I'll have to play with it a little bit to kind of massage that out before I send it to Twyla. But otherwise, this is the end result and I really hope that Twyla loves him. She seemed to enjoy the pictures that I sent her, so fingers crossed that she lives up to her expectations. To anyone hoping to add a little calcifer purse to their own cosplay or costume of some sort, I would suggest using flannel, fleece, anything that is less stretchy than stretch velvet to make the purse. This is I think the right sort of shape for him, and I think appliquing the flames is probably the right move. But if you have any more informed ideas, please leave them in the comments. I would love to hear how others would improve on this design, and maybe I could even make a calcifer try number three in the future. I would also suggest you either use safety eyes or do a cute little bit of embroidery stitching to give him a pupil depending on what your materials are available to you. I think this would be really cute with a little embroidered outline on the outside of his eyes. In general, there are different little flares that you could give to him that would be really fun. But this should be a really great base for anybody looking for ideas for their cosplays. Thank you so much for getting to the end of the video. Here is 1,000 experience points just for that. Thank you so much to my patrons, Mark, Nathaniel, Twyla, and Liam. You guys are rock stars, and if you'd like to join them, please go down to the description and follow my Patreon link. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel and helps me keep doing crazy projects. Don't forget to drink some water. Thank you so much again, and have a great day. Peace.